What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this new album from Juice World called Death Race to Love. Juice World is a rapper slash auto crooner coming out of Chicago. He made crazy noise last year with his smash hit Lucid Dreams, and that song was on his album Goodbye Good Riddance. I didn't review that one, but I did hear some of it and I could understand the appeal, because what he's doing is giving you those catchy melodies and vocals over top of some beats that range from being heavy and banging to very smooth and melodic. So I haven't really heard anything from Juice World that felt really original, over the top as far as unique qualities goes, or, you know, bringing great content. He just kind of felt like an another artist who's falling into that lane of very popular mainstream rap. So I get what he's doing, didn't hate it, don't love it, but once I saw that this was 22 tracks long, this album right here, my expectations got lower than a snake's nutsack in the grass, because there's no way he could hold down 22 tracks based off of everything I heard. I was hoping maybe he'd prove me wrong, but god damn it, he definitely did not. You are going to get some of those catchy vocals still, and I do got to shout out the production, because I think a lot of the beats on here are pretty solid. It's not surprising when you see Hit Boy all over this thing, giving you bangers like the track Big, and even melodic smooth joints like She's the One. So, production-wise, you can listen through this and hear some good beats. That seems to be uh, a theme with a lot of projects that come out right now. Even with that last Gunna project I reviewed, I think the production on it was really good, even though there wasn't anything else that was overly inspirational on it. But this is yet another one of those albums where you make it to track four or five, and then you sigh because as of yet you haven't heard anything that's too interesting or memorable and you know you still are not even a quarter of the way through with this one because you got 22 tracks all over it so it just drags it goes on and on and on and I really feel like this could have been good if he had to cut it back there are some moments here that are certainly decent and if he had to cut this back to say 11 tracks maybe maybe even 10 tracks like just cut that shit in half with a fucking katana blade this would have been much better still wouldn't be amazing but I probably could say that it was a decent or good album whereas this one right here, I felt like it was pretty bad because of how redundant and repetitive it gets. To be fair, you are going to get some light rock and emo elements, and he does tie in some rap flows that are pretty decent, like on the song 10 Feet, but all this isn't enough to hold down 22 tracks and, you know, make it interesting and give you enough versatility and variety to keep you on your toes and keep you wanting to listen to it. He does these little things here and there that might set him apart with that punk and emo shit, but it wasn't really over the top to me. Like, I know people really talk about that a lot with Juice World, how that's how he's changing the game is doing that shit, but to me it ain't that different, it ain't that great, so I didn't really feel like it was too special when he was bringing those things in here. This really just feels like one of those projects where you could take all the verses and hooks, throw them in a hat, pull them out, and throw them haphazardly on the beats and there wouldn't make much of a difference because he's doing the same shit on pretty much all these songs as far as the way that he's rapping uh, the way that he's auto crooning I could say because that's what makes up most of this project the beats are similar at times there's always something that's gonna feel similar as you're listening through this project including the content he goes on and on and on about taking pills as if it's an interesting personality trait he does tie it into depression and heartbreak once in a while but the thing is he doesn't explore all this in any interesting way it's very straightforward it comes across more as teen angst than a real intelligent look at these issues and how to plan around them and make things better so it does get droning and draggy when you tie this repetitive content in with the repetitive sounding flows and the repetitive sounding beats really i was kind of disappointed in this one not that i was expecting a whole lot from it but god damn it man 22 tracks once i saw this fucking playstation one game cover or whatever it is i mean that didn't really make me too excited either but uh this even was worse than i expected so let's just scroll down the notes here we're trying to finish this shit up man i don't have a whole lot to say about it honestly you are also going to get some pretty cringy lyrics on here like on the song syphilis where he's yelling about his gun having a dick and wanting to fuck your face with it and while i understand he's talking about heavy artillery it sounds like he's talking about taking a dildo and duct taping it to the top of a draco to make a drill dough so not surprisingly, really some of the best tracks on here are the ones that involve features. I think it was a bold move to make 22 tracks and only have three features on it because he doesn't have the depth or variety or versatility to hold that down. But hey, the people that do come through help quite a bit. So we got Brent Fayez showing up with his usual nice vocals on the interlude. Thought that was a smooth little cut. And while I don't usually get excited for Young Thug features, I was happy to hear him on the song On God because at least he was bringing some personality and switching things up a bit. As for the other feature, it's this guy named Clever who comes through with warbly vocals on the clunky rock-infused track Ring Ring. So that special, uh, I mean that feature wasn't really anything special. 
this album wasn't really anything special. I'm going to give it a very light two out of five, man. There are instances where I certainly hear things that are good from him. Like I said, some of the rap flows are decent at times. He does have those catchy melodies and some decent beats, but it is just like he's fucking hitting you over the head with this hammer of mediocrity as you listen through these 22 tracks, man. 22 tracks from Juice World was not needed. I don't even know if his fans wanted 22 tracks from him, because at this point, you must be thinking he's just doing the same sort of sound over and over. I don't hear much growth here from his last project. As I said, those emo and punk elements that people seem to talk about a lot with him they don't really shine through or shake things up enough to make this interesting so you know it is what it is i've said my piece a light two out of five feels fair to me because i did like this better than some of the other products i didn't like like Lil pump and gunna there was a bit of potential that i heard here to make something good but as it is it didn't turn out so that's all I got to say about it, man. I know, kind of choppy review. It is what it is. It's just a rant. But you guys let me know in the comment section what you think. And of course, make sure you do all that good YouTube and social media stuff where you show me love and you show me lots of it, man. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.